Kaya Mai Koda Prasham for giving me a chance to give a talk in, uh, in, among the prestigious or senior professors and senior colleagues. And the including my professor is also here. So thanks for uh, this opportunity. So I am Dr. Degan, a medical oncologist. I recently graduated two years back and uh, I am working in same uh, Madras Cancer Care Foundation, Dr. Ramanan's team. So my talk will be very simple. I have made it very simple, not very extensive. Even before the 18 minutes, I will finish it. And uh, just I wanted to give a taste of oncology only in colon cancer. So uh, most of the things you may be knowing and uh, only a overview of things, what is new and interesting about uh, colon cancer. Um, so my talk will be on what is new in uh, stage 2 colon cancer. Stage two, 1 you know all, uh, all we know in that only surgery will be the option. So in stage 2, in which patients we can avoid chemotherapy. So in oncology or medical oncology we say the chemotherapy means most of the patients will be very much frightened more than the surgery because surgery is under anesthesia. Nobody will be bothered even about the big surgery. But chemotherapy, everybody will be thinking as if some pain is going to happen and there is always a big notional inhibition for chemotherapy. So, uh, which patients, if some patients we could avoid, that will be a big boon for the patients. So, uh, my talk will be on which patients will, we can avoid chemotherapy in stage 2. And uh, in stage 2 and stage 3, which patients we can give less chemotherapy and uh, what is the new things in stage 4 colon cancer or metastatic pollution. So as we all know, NCCN is a national cancer uh, guidelines which is a US based guideline that says we have to do MRSI testing. There is one genetic testing called microsatellite instability testing has to be done for just for differentiating whom we can give chemotherapy and whom it may not, we may not uh, or we may avoid chemotherapy. Okay. Among that, uh, among the three, uh, one, uh, so among the three uh, sub, uh, type stages, stage 2A, that is P, T3, N0, M0. At any point you can stop if you don't uh, understand or you can clarify with me. So among, if you can find somebody with P, T3, N0, M0, that is no negative T3 lesion particular patient we are definitely supposed to do an MSI where it makes a difference of I, uh, giving chemotherapy whereas not giving chemotherapy. Okay, so if the microsatellite instability that is just few nucleotides will be repeating in the gene or uh, in the genome, so that can be detected by either a PCR or even MMR deficiency can be identified by AFC. Both are having a good concordance. So if you are able to find out if there is a microsatellite instability high by any way, either by PCR technique or by MMR deficiency, in those patients, if they are stage 2A, definitely we can avoid and only follow up, which is a big relief for the patient. So if even if they are uh, stable, if there is no instability, in those patients, even IV chemotherapy can be avoided and only oral chemotherapy called oral capsitabin can be given for a period of six months and uh, we can stop. Then the difference with the molecular profiling, so there is, there is a recent uh, concept of molecular uh, uh, thing helping in the treatment of colon cancer. So second one, in which patients we can give less chemotherapy? If we have to give chemotherapy, which are the patients we can give less chemotherapy? So that some stage, high risk stage two, uh, sorry, stage two B, stage two C, and the low risk stage 3, like T3, T1 to T3 and N1, uh, these are called as low risk stage 3 and uh, high risk stage 2 means if there is a T4 or if there is an inadequate nodal harvest, if the nodes are not being uh, adequately removed, like for example if they have removed only 5 nodes, so that is considered to be uh, high risk, so they are prone for more recurrence. So in those patients, and especially if they have a presentation itself is obstruction or a perforation, uh, those patients we have to consider for adjuvant chemotherapy. 
In those patients, based on a trial called IDEA trial, International Collaboration Data on a Drug Evaluation Trial, that has found to be beneficial by it. only four cycles of KPOX. KPOX is a combination of oral chemotherapy and only one short IV chemotherapy called as oxaliplat. So that can be given only for four cycles, that is for three months. And the instead of normally we were giving for six months, okay, and the patients will be all lamenting with neuropathy. They will have a severe peripheral neuropathy, low platelet count. So literally they will be floating because of sensory neuropathy. So that can be avoided <coughs> by shortening the treatment for three months. So that is what a reasonable thing. So in low stage three and high risk stage two, in some patients we can avoid or we can shorten the duration of so, and in stage 4, what is new in stage 4? It's already there. And few things, now there is a definite, uh, everybody has started realizing there is a definite difference anatomically and molecularly. And uh, even now in practice we have started uh, slowly moving towards molecular thing also. So anatomically there is a difference between a left-sided colon cancer and a right-sided colon cancer. And molecular wise, we have to at least identify whether it is microsatellite unstable or stable, whether they are RAS wild type or RAS mutant. Among the RAS, whether they are RAP mutant or RAP wild type, BRAP, it's called BRAP. And uh, one which we use in breast cancer, the same thing, HOP2 is also coming up in the colon. So, <coughs> for example, if somebody has a liver limited or liver limited stage 4 colon cancer. Somebody has a left sided colon cancer but it has spread to liver. In those patients can we achieve Q? Is it possible to achieve Q? Anybody? In stage 4 colon cancer with liver only mass. So definitely it is there. In some situations we can achieve with all of our uh, chemotherapy, surgery, all these things. So is it possible to achieve Q in limited stage 4? colon limited disease. So in colorectal cancer we have a luxury of so many drugs, combination of drugs we can use in first line, second line and third line. All these things are there. The base backbone of the chemotherapy will be by a few oxaliplatin and uh, or um, iron Okay, that is uh, either either we call it as polfox or polvin, that is by a few recovery and oxaliplatin or iron So it is combined with two blockers, inhibitors, that is why molecular subtypes are definitely make a role. So we have to do a RAS, okay, that will be called as ALRAS testing, either it is KRAS positive or NRAS positive or wild type, okay, that is why we call it as wild type or mutant. So if they are wild type, we can use say that cetuximab or panitumumab, they are called as EGFR blockers. And, uh, all these VEGF blockers can also be used. They are some vascular endothelial growth factor blockers, like either bevacizumab, aflibacid, or ramicizumab. So among that we use mainly bevacizumab. So the, even in third line, if somebody has failed for two lines, there is a definite option of third line drug called rogarafinib or TAS-102. So uh, TAS-102 is not available, but this is available in India. This is, has to be imported as of now. But still, even in third line, there is a hope. For few months, uh, life can be prolonged in that situation also. So, uh, uh, just to describe, there are two pathways, major pathways for colon cancer. One is either EGFR, uh, through the EGFR pathway, like EGFR is stimulated. So there is epithelial growth factor that gets stimulated. And there is always a constant activation of RAS, RAF, that's what we call them, RAF whether it is a wild type or mutant type and MEC and ERK pathway finally there is an activation of a, uh, or a nuclear transcription and the cell growth happens uh, uninhibited there is another pathway called major pathway that acts to PA3K, MTAR and uh, AKT and MTAR pathway so we are blocking either this pathway or the pathway by inhibitors like EGFR inhibitors called as septuximab and panitumumab and VEGF blockers called as bevacizumab is the commonest thing we use. So, 
So we, I was always talking about all these blockers. What is the ultimate benefit of adding these blockers? It's marginal, but in an oncologic patient, if we are able to achieve a marginal benefit of two months, that is significant. So if you see in first line, if there is an addition of EJFR blocker, we are able to get up to 3.5 to 4 months added survival. And uh, whereas there is one slightly lesser. In second line, we can add more of 2 months. And in third line, 1.5 months can be added extra by adding this uh, overall survival benefit by all these uh, inhibitors. So that is the concept that First, if we are able to receive all the three lines, definitely the overall survival improves. For example, if no treatment is given, he is going to die in six months. If some first line treatment is given, he will live for 12 months, that is one year. If second line treatment is able to get, then it is for two years approximately, and another two months extra will be there as a third line if he is able to tolerate. So what are all the factors which design in in the treatment of stage 4 is that colon cancer is patient characteristics and the tumor characteristics and the molecular characteristics and also the patient preference. So sometimes even if the patient is very sick, we definitely say first uh, supportive care is also an option. So not, not doing it or uh, giving no treatment and only palliative care is also an option if the patient is very weak. So. Uh, as a physician to say that directly to the patient may be a little difficult, but still we we'll keep saying here's the performance status. If the general condition of the patient is very poor, uh, so our concept is not to give at the, till the end. In the ICU and all, we don't give any treatment, oncology related treatment. So this is our concept. So we want the quality of life and uh, quality of life and pain free thing only have to be achieved. If the patient is fully fit, and considering all these things, if somebody a fully fit person like 50 years is coming to the clinic. So what we do in practice, or as I was doing, is that generally we do this KRAS and RAS, and if they are even more affordable, we do a BRAS mutation. So especially if they are left-sided, we definitely add along with the backbone, either a cetuximab or a penetrimab, definitely will add. But the cost may be a limiting factor. So in RAS, right side and colon cancer. So we are deciding based on the left side or right side or on based on the RAS molecular markers, definitely treatment is changing. So definitely we are supposed to do a molecular testing. Minimum is all RAS testing at least. So in right side, if the patient is fully fit and if we are KRAS is wild or mutant, uh, based on one trial called tri trial, there is a SUMAN plus Whole 3 or whole 3 NOx is found to be, that's all the combination of drugs plus biosimilar is found to be more beneficial. Or if not possible, we can use at least a double it drug for the biosimilar. So, one minute. So, molecularly, there is a difference in the right side because embryologically also it is derived from impact, whereas the sigmoid and other, the left side of the colon is derived from the colon. So if you see more RAS, sorry, more BRAS and more MSI will be here, and the left side and more RAS mutation will be there. So one thing, just uh, quickly, to say there is some difference in the left side and right side, so if the velocity man is added, we have a slightly better OS in first line, is about 29 months, that is considered more than two years. And for uh, either EGFR blocker on the left side, it is 39 months, that is 3 years. So anybody who has a stage 4 colon cancer and he survives for 3 years, it's a definitely a significant thing. So we have a combination of all the drugs, which is, especially in colon cancer, now we see the overall survival is 2 to 3 years, which is not done that earlier. So first line, if RAS mutation is there, VEGF inhibitor will be the best combination. If RAS wild type, we uh, generally we tend to use a EGFR blocker first, followed by a VEGF blocker in the second line. So third line drug we have is called Rubrafenib. So that is also has a marginal benefit, not, and it has a toxicity profile also, it's slightly more highly toxic because of hand wipe syndrome and all. But still, it gives a minimum overall survival difference of about one to one point five months. 
And the, the last one is about immunotherapy. Those who are having MSI positive, somebody who has uh, MSI high, in those patients, immunotherapy like Tamrolizumab, Nivolumab, or a combination of Nivolumab and Ipilimumab, it's all checkpoint inhibitors, they are found to be useful. If they are MSI high or MSI, if they are MMR deficient or MSI high. So this is a swimmer's plot, there is a definite uh, improvement or use of uh, Tamrolizumab. And we can see with the Nivo and Ipilimumab, there is a definite tumor reduction. So from the hundreds it is coming down, so there is a tumor response is there by this graph. So, uh, last one is that in some wild type trans, that two positive uh, patients. Still, there is an option of oral drugs, oral SIV, with uh, slightly lesser side effect maybe. So, he, it is a oral HER2 blocker, plus an IV HER2 blocker, that has shown a recent response rate in a small group of 19 trials presented. So, like, the result is that in it plus IV, fast as human. So, there are so many molecular subtypes. And uh, even uh, after the second line or third line, there is options are still there. And most of the patients will be asking, is there anything to be done? We want every, all the money to be spent. So in that case, we can try all these things. So thank you. Okay. So only one request for you. You said about six months the patient dies. Please don't say that. I started my career in 78 in Cancer Institute. And Professor Krishnamurti, founder director of the Cancer Institute, was asked to see a patient from Drive Hospital for a cancer cheek. They have asked for a confidential report to be sent to the railway authorities. He gave a report saying that he is suffering from squamous cell carcinoma of the cheek. He will die in five years. Well, I will definitely take it. Only he decides we are just quoting. Even in the everyday practice, we used to say. This is the average thing we are quoting based on the term, actually. Uh, anybody can outlive whatever we say, that is all. Or even lesser than that it can be. So it, it, nobody can decide who is going to die the next day or the next minute. Only God decides, that is definitely there. Right. Thank you very much. Now I request Dr. Dashna Murthy to present a certificate of appreciation for uh, to Dr. Chagan.